Okay, so this might sound a little crazy, but just hear me out. I use a gaming monitor with my Mac. And you might think it's almost as dumb as buying this 160 US dollar cable from Apple, video on that coming soon, but I wanted to talk about my experience and why you might also want to do the same thing, even if you've just got a base model MacBook Air. Okay, so getting straight into it, there are two main reasons. And number one is of course, the high refresh rate, right? So everything you do on your Mac just feels really snappy, really smooth, and that's everything from productivity tasks like scrolling through, websites or flicking between desktops to even things such as gaming. And secondly, speaking of gaming, if you're someone who has maybe a PlayStation or an Xbox or a gaming PC on your desk as well, you can use this monitor with not only your Mac, but also your PC or gaming console as well. And that's it, that's the whole video. So you don't need to watch to the end, but seriously do stick around to the end because I never see this topic discussed like at all. So let's just dive straight into it. Also, quick thanks to Setapp for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Now about that high refresh rate, screens these days are typically 60 Hertz, which means that the image you see on the screen is refreshed 60 times every single second. Traditionally, MacBook screens are 60 Hertz as well, with the exception of course of the most recent MacBook Pro, which features ProMotion, allowing the screen to intelligently switch between refresh rates up to 120 Hertz. And before you ask, no, the studio display does not have ProMotion, so it's locked to 60 Hertz. Now, there are of course a lot of monitors out there that can do more than 60 Hertz, but the problem is they're mostly marketed towards gamers. And that's something that most Mac users don't really do a lot of, at least on their Mac, and certainly not at 144 FPS. Now, these gamer-oriented monitors are more similar to traditional monitors than you think, with features like USB-C connectivity, good color accuracy, HDR. A lot of them these days don't even look gamery. It's just a minimal looking monitor that wouldn't look out of place in an office. And the price of these monitors has actually decreased quite a lot in recent years. But for some reason, most Mac users don't really consider these monitors as an option. They tend to stick mostly with the traditional 60 Hertz monitors. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, especially, you know, depending on your budget, there's only so much you can afford. And don't forget, a lot of people tend to prioritize things like resolution over refresh rates. They'll go for the 5K studio display, for example. Nothing wrong with that either, it really just depends on your personal preference. Now you're probably wondering what's so good about having a high refresh rate monitor. Well, if you wanna get an idea of what it feels like, if you're currently using a 60 Hertz monitor, switch your refresh rate down to 30 Hertz in system preferences and compare the two. You'll notice that everything seems really laggy and also way less responsive, especially when just moving windows around. This is because the time between each image on the monitor updating is now 32 milliseconds instead of 16 milliseconds at 60 Hertz. Honestly, the best advice I can give you is to just experience it if you haven't yet already. So go to a store, test it out at a friend's house, whatever, because literally everything you do on a high refresh monitor just feels so much snappier and smoother. And all of this is especially noticeable if you have a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro with a ProMotion screen. So if you've got that 120 Hertz ProMotion screen on one side and then a 60 Hertz monitor on the other side, you can really tell that difference. So bringing that monitor refresh rate up a little bit to match the MacBook, it's just a much more enjoyable experience. Also, if you do any gaming on the MacBook, and yes, Macs aren't exactly super optimized for games, neither are games for Macs. Sure, you probably won't be able to get anywhere near enough FPS to saturate the refresh rate of the monitor, but there is still a noticeable difference between even 60 and 90 FPS, for example, that you will definitely feel. And this brings me to my next point. Many of you might have a gaming console or a gaming PC at your desk and you don't have room or you simply don't want a dual monitor setup. But just before we get into that and talk about that a little bit more, a quick word from our sponsor. Now, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you would have seen some really cool apps and tools that we use here on a daily basis. And you can get access to these and 230 other apps through a subscription with Setapp. It takes away the pain of having to look up, compare, and buy all of these apps separately. Now, I do a lot of MacBook benchmarking on this channel, and there are some apps out there that are just a no-brainer for me. One of these apps is called iStat Menus, and I pretty much use it on a daily basis because it's extremely useful if you want to monitor exactly what your Mac is doing. 
or Al Dente Pro to set my battery charging limits and prolong my battery's lifespan, and Wi-Fi Explorer, which can help you solve pretty much any Wi-Fi issue. On Setup, you can explore app collections for most common tasks or problems, become more productive, automate your routine or workflow, and cut out repetitive tasks with no ads, no extra costs, regular updates, and new apps added each month. So check out the link in the description below and get set up before June 20 to get an extended 14 day free trial. Now having your Mac and also a gaming PC or a gaming console, whatever you've got, attached to the same monitor is a really slick setup because all it takes is a few clicks of the input button and you can switch between the two really easily. My home setup consists of a MacBook Pro and my custom gaming PC all running on the same 4K high refresh rate monitor. When doing productivity tasks on my MacBook, I get a really nice 144Hz 4K image, which is about as close as you can get to the ProMotion screen of the MacBook. And when switching to my PC for gaming, I can keep that same high refresh rate and adjust the in-game resolution up and down to maximize my FPS if necessary. Now, speaking of monitors, let me just quickly introduce the two gaming monitors that I've featured in this video. This first one is the BenQ Mobius EX2710Q. It's a 27 inch 16 by nine aspect ratio IPS panel with a 1440p resolution and 165 Hertz refresh rate. At just under 400 US dollars, it's a relatively affordable gaming monitor, about the same cost as the super popular LG 4K UltraSharp that featured on this channel previously. The BenQ is a really bang for buck monitor. It's got a ton of cool features that I will go into more detail in, in a separate review. And although a 1440p screen is not as pixel dense and as much less PPI or pixels per inch compared to a MacBook Retina screen, 4K monitor or the 5K studio display, I find that it's a nice balance between cost, image quality and raw GPU power required to push games at a decent FPS. And you can also use apps like Switch Res X or Better Dummy if you have an Apple Silicon Mac to improve scaling with 1440p monitors. The second monitor is more premium. It's the EVE Spectrum 4K and it's also a 27 inch 16 by nine IPS panel. However, like the name suggests, it has a 4K resolution with a 144 Hertz refresh rate, which is pretty insane but it's also twice the price of the BenQ, coming in at around 900 US dollars if you include the stand. Although there is also a cheaper 1440p model if you don't need the 4K resolution. Now the Eve comes with full USB-C data and 100 watts of charging capability. So with just one USB-C cable, you can charge your MacBook and output an image to the monitor, but there is a limitation here with the 4K version, which leads me to my next point. How do you output all of these crazy frame rates from your Mac to your monitor? Well, if you're using a 144Hz 1440p monitor, for example, it's actually fairly easy. You just need an inexpensive USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4 cable that can handle all that data. This is one I've been using for a while. It's pretty cheap from Amazon and I'll also link it down below. And yes, this cable will work with any Mac that has Thunderbolt 3 or above, which is basically any Mac since 2016. And that includes the M1 MacBook Air. Now the Eve Spectrum, for example, being 4K is a little bit more complicated. To get the full 4K 144 Hertz image, you need to be able to transmit 40 gigabits per second of data. You also can't use the HDMI port on any of the new Macs either because they're only HDMI 2.0 ports, meaning it can only transmit up to 18 gigabits per second compared with 48 gigabits per second if Apple had made it HDMI 2.1. Luckily though, the Eve Spectrum features a USB-C port with DisplayPort 1.4 video input. So as long as you're using a high quality USB-C cable, you can just plug your MacBook directly into the monitor. There's no need for any kind of adapters or special cables. Or if you want a bit of extra connectivity, you can do it through a dock instead, like the CalDigit TS4 I have on my desk. But no matter what method I use, I'll get a 4K 144Hz image to my monitor, while also charging my MacBook at the same time. And I can just switch between that and my gaming PC whenever I want. And if you do want a full video on my one monitor setup, 
let me know in the comments. So yeah, there's really a lot of trade-offs when it comes to monitors. Do you want a high refresh rate? Do you want a high resolution? What's your budget? Do you need color accuracy? It's a ton of different factors. And hopefully this video sheds some light on some of the benefits of going with a high refresh capable monitor. And seriously guys, I really do urge you to go out and just try it yourselves because once you sit down and you use it, maybe you play a few games on it, I guarantee you, you will never want to go back. But apart from that, thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.